Hello, good morning, and welcome to the webinar, everybody. This is Garen Hess with DemoChimp. Thanks for taking the time to spend a few minutes with us this morning learning about intelligent demo automation. So I want to ask you a question. What would happen to your sales if you could increase your close rate by 27%? You could, and if you were able to decrease your sales cycle by 68%? That's essentially taking a two-month sales cycle and reducing it to two weeks. I want you to think about what the impact would be on your organization if you were able to do that in the next 90 days. And I'm going to show you how you can how that's possible in this webinar. So as we as I have in the subtitle for the webinar, it's reaching all decision makers at once with the right message. I want to start by talking about a couple of problems that we all face in B2B sales. One of the big challenges when pe when salespeople do the demo. They're doing this one-size-fits-all demo. Just they repeat the demo over and over. And really great salespeople actually have learned to tailor their demo to the needs of the prospect. But even so, it's a very manual process and takes a lot of human labor time and energy to do that. A lot of times there's a lot of trade-offs. We think we have to we can only demo to some people and other people will have to wait and so on. The problem with doing a one-size-fits-all demo is when you try to do a one-size-fits-all demo, you're not necessarily speaking to the, to the needs of the individuals that are, that are there listening. And ironically, today you're going to kind of get a one-size-fits-all demo because you're in this live webinar. <laughs> but if you'd like, we can send you an automated demo that will help solve that. And um, in any case, in the... In the live demos, when you're when you're doing your demos for your prospects, you may not be speaking to the pain points that they have. Well, the two pain points we're talking about today are long sales cycles, and we wish we could close deal more deals, our close rate going up. So the other problem in B2B sales is you've got to demo to multiple people to close the deal, right? There's not just one decision maker. So you might demo for the first person. And then they say, oh, I've got another person that needs it, uh, maybe a couple people there. And then, oh, there's somebody in accounting that needs to just sign off on it. And, and oh, and, uh, late in the game, there's somebody and you know, the CEO comes on the scene and wants to check it out. So the average in the industry is about five to six demos per close. I've actually met people who have to, de have to try to sell to more than 40 decision makers in their buying uh, cycle. And... That seems absurd, but they're selling into the edu higher education industry. And they just have a lot of people that have to get in on the decision. So it's a, a chronic problem across all B2B sales. And this is what causes the long sales cycle. So not being able to match up your value message with their needs and, and also having the multiple demos that you have to do to, in the, to get to all the purchasing members of the purchasing committee really cause some significant problems. Well, the solution that we're proposing that DemoChimp provides to our customers is we put the demo in the hands of the prospect. So they're in the driver's seat, and they get to actually choose how the demo is. And the demo has an intelligent personalization engine that configures the demo to each prospect's unique interests. And that way you get the right message to the right person on the buying panel. And then we have demo analytics, demo analytics in the background that actually track how they interact with the demo, who they share it with, what's important to them, and it gathers it all into a dashboard so you can actually discover and engage that buying panel really early in the sales process. We'll talk about how this impacted a specific company, uh, one of our customers, in a little bit here. What I want to do right now is actually show you how a personalized uh, automated demo works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you an example of a little sample. So at the very beginning of the demo, you typically have some kind of intro video that defines your basic value proposition. It basically tells the world why you exist, why people should care, you know, what your main differentiator is, and that, that kind of thing. And that gets them interested to continue on. Uh, it helps just set the stage. But then people want to know more, assuming they do want to know more after your intro video. So if, you know, if you have a good intro video, they will. And so I'll just kind of skip past that. And after that, it goes into our personalization engine. 
which you can see gives them the option to indicate what is very important, somewhat important, or not important. And you can list, these are defined based on the features that you list in your demo over here. So these might be different features of your product, or they may be problems that your clients typically want to solve, or they may be benefits that they want to achieve, or that sort of thing. So they're user definable. And you can see all throughout the demo there's a call to action button over here. If you're using it on your website for lead gen and lead qualification, you might have the call to action to contact me or start a free trial or you can have, have your own, you know, put your own buttons in here to go to other websites or other links or you know, just label these buttons differently. We also have a way for the prospect to access uh, somebody with questions immediately. So if you have a live chat system, you can kind of plug that into the system so they can immediately start interacting with you. Also have a place for a phone number and so on. And then it's completely branded to your own your own company. So your logo, your colors, and so on. But here's what here's what happens. Here's how, how DemoChimp automatically matches or maps the demo to their unique interests. So they're able to put in what's important to them. So let's say that I think this feature is somewhat important, this one's very important. And let's say this one's not important to me. So what it's going to do in the background is there's a bank of video segments. So DemoChimp personalizes video and documents so that your prospect always automatically learns about your solution in the best, most relevant way to them. And so what it's going to do is it's going to pull different video segments together into a unique experience for this particular prospect. And how it works is for very important topics, there's a longer treatment, and we always lead with that first. So DemoChimp, just like an expert salesperson, would start with the things that are most important to the prospect and spend more time on it, and then it would go to the things that are somewhat important and spend less time but still cover them, and then it just kind of skips over anything that's not important. So let's see how that works here. So if I click Continue, you can see that the first thing in the demo is Feature 2, which is the one that I indicated was very important to me. And so now it's showing a longer video segment. So this is, of course, just placeholder videos. They're showing a longer video segment. And it's also loaded some documents down here that are maybe relevant to the prospect. And you know, if they put their mouse over, they can actually get some information and so on about that and download those. Um, so once they are able to go through this uh, the ones that are most important to them, so which is just one video in this case, you'll see that it will automatically transition to the next video, and it should pull up feature one, just a shorter version, so you can see that's just a really short version, um, and so it, it creates not only the right sequence, but the right amount of content, so that you can keep your prospects engaged they don't get bored. I don't know how many of you have sat through a demo where they're just going on and on about things you don't really care about. Um, but uh, that is uh, what you're able to avoid with the automated demo, right? We're mimicking an expert salesperson, but with the use of interactive technology. Down at the bottom, you'll see there's a total number of demo seconds and total remaining. So they get the seamless experience um, that is tailored just to them. At the very end, of the demo, it'll actually give them an option to look at the elements that they didn't choose, the, the features or whatever, if, if they want to, because sometimes once they've seen a little bit, they want to see, see some more. So that's how the, the basics of the intelligent automated demo works. Um, what I want to explain now is what happens with the analytics behind the scenes. Give me a second to just switch my screen here. So what's really neat is you can go in and you, when, when you send a demo to somebody, um, let's say that you have set an appointment and you want to uh, send them a demo ahead of the appointment. This is what we consider to be a best practice. So you've got an appointment on Friday, it's Tuesday, you say, hey, Mr. Prospect, here is 
I'm going to send you a demo. Can you watch this before the appointment on Friday? And you send that to them. You actually get notified when they watch it. And you can click on the link to see what their demo lytics are. So when you go into their actual uh, view of how they interact with the demo, you can see what was very important to them here and kind of see the different features, elements. These are some of the features in our own demo. And you can see the heat maps of what they actually watched. So not only what did they indicate was very important, but how much of that did they watch and did they rewatch anything? So right here you can see the heat map, they rewatched this section over. So it'd be interesting to go back there and look at that and say, oh, what did they really care about at this point? You can also see what is somewhat important to them and then you can also indicate or find out what is not important. And that's just as critical to positioning your conversation with them as any other aspect of the analytics is understanding what's not important. So you don't spend much time on that, if any at all. I mean, you may ask them, why isn't this important? But one of the powerful ways to use this in sales is when you're in that conversation on Friday, you say, hey, I noticed that you watched our demo. And let's just assume that they had watched the whole thing here. And you say, you indicated that increasing revenue with DemoChamp was very important to you. Can you tell me why that's very important to you, right? Or I noticed that shortening sales cycle was only somewhat important. Tell me why that was only somewhat important. It helps you have a better conversation. You can also come kind of armed with details around those topics uh, because that you already know what's, what's happening. It gives you early visibility. So you get to know what their concerns are even before talking to them, which is really kind of a remarkable thing. And DemoChimp is transforming the way sales happen and accelerating what's happening because you can spend less time doing that repetitive demo and more time in closing conversations. So when they come and they've seen your demo, you spend all that time in drilling down on their own personal implementation plans and things like that. Now, the neat thing is once you send a demo to somebody, Let's say John here sends it to Sarah. Um, she can share the demo. So she might share it with three other decision makers in her purchasing committee. And they watch it, you know, when and however they want on their mobile devices or, you know, when they're commuting or, or some break during the day. They, they get an invitation from Sarah that says, hey, she wants you to watch this product demo. And so not only that, but John gets notified that Sarah has shared it out. And he also gets to check in and look at their individual demo lytics to see how they interacted with the demo. So the beautiful thing about this is you can actually see alignment or misalignment in among the different members of the buying panel. The other thing that's really amazing is that this happens very quickly. So instead of where instead of the calendar where you have a demo with one person and you schedule another appointment a couple weeks later and, and you know, that goes on and on, this can all happen before the very first call. In fact, we have a specific methodology. If you're interested in learning more about that, um, you know, reach out to me. But we have a methodology that where you can uh, encourage that sharing in such a way that quite often everybody in the buying, the buying panel or purchasing committee will uh, look at the demo and interact with it before the call so that when you're on that call, everybody who needs to be in on the purchase is educated and ready to talk specifics. This will often shave off dramatic uh, amounts of time from your sales cycle. In this case, we just show three to six weeks. It's just a sample. Depends on what your sales cycle is, but our customers are seeing uh, some remarkable results, as much as 68%, like I was mentioning, uh, that basically takes a two-week or four, four week, I'm mean, sorry, eight-week sales cycle and reduces it down to about two weeks. So the, the bottom line in terms of the, the big value this produces is it helps drive, uh, build consensus and drive to a purchasing decision much faster with all the different people. And that's one of the big challenges in B2B sales is how do you get all the different people to you know, agree that this is the right solution? Well, the, the, the reason they often struggle with that is because they're not 
we, we as salespeople don't give the right message to the right person. Everybody on the buying panel has a different idea about what's important to them. And if you're only saying your, your one message to everybody, then that may not be hitting home. Right now, across all the demos that our clients send out, 63% when they send them to their prospects, when somebody views a demo, 63% of the time they're going to share that demo with their colleagues. So it really helps you discover and engage that, that buying committee. The way that they share it is inside the demo, they click on this share button here, and that opens up the form. They fill out the form here and they can share it with multiple people. They can click Submit, or they can just forward, the, forward it. But once they send it out, they, it, it sends them a personalized invitation, and then it lists the different people that are invited inside that organization. So if Dustin shared it with Jill, and Jill shared it, or they shared it with multiple people, they're going to see the list of who's viewed it, who hasn't, and it helps them understand internally who's all involved in the purchasing decision. So it helps facilitate that on their side. It helps the champion internally be a better champion on the sales side. DemoChimp also tracks an engagement statistic that helps you understand who is most engaged with your product demo. So you can understand where all the traction is happening. And, of course, you get notifications by email and so on, but you can also come in here and kind of look and see the views and shares and so on. So this is an example of how you might see across the buying panel what is important, unimportant, very important to them and where the alignment is. So you can see this person indicated all these things were unimportant. And yet many of these things are marked as very important to some other people in the purchasing committee, the buying panel. And so it makes for some very good conversations when you can get into the call and say, hey, notice when you went through the demo, you thought this and you thought that. Can we talk about that and, and help me understand where you're at better? So a lot of people, when we talk about demo automation, get concerned that we're trying to replace salespeople entirely and, or that somehow, you know, you can't automate the demo. That's, you've got to have this personal touch. And I, I agree that in most cases, a personal interaction is really critical to B2B sales. And so what DemoChimp does is it doesn't replace that personal interaction. It enhances it. It amplifies it, makes it more effective, and it makes it more efficient. You don't have to spend as much time. You can actually manage more pipeline. But ultimately, it, it builds the consensus to drive to a purchasing agreement much faster. So again, you can drill down on any of the people in the buying panel and look at their specific demolytics, their heat maps, and kind of see how they interacted with it. So really, once you start doing it this way, you'll wonder why you used to give so many demos out uh, before reaching decision makers. This is just a new way, a faster way to do what you've done manually before, but it automates in such a way that there, you get some really, really great results. So if we look at the sales cycle without demo automation, we can kind of see that we do this a demo, a demo to the initial contact, a demo to potential users, to financial buyout, maybe to the entire group. Eventually, we do the demo to potential users. Finally, there's some decision, right? Um, these are just examples of all the different times you may have to demo in the B2B sales cycle, and you get the deal closed. With DemoChamp, you move all those demos up right up at the front. So you're moving all the client education, product education, up to the beginning, and, and you're accelerating that collaboration. And of course, you get all that visibility into what kind of traction and uh, you're, you're getting inside your prospects organization. DemoChimp is like having some really high-powered flashlights in a cave, right? You're, oftentimes, you're, you're selling in into the dark. You feel like, oh, I, I'm trying to get into this organization, I'm trying to sell in there. I've got one little contact in here. But as they pass that demo around, it's illuminating what's inside their organization, and it's easier to navigate through that sale. 
So to get back to the example I showed you at the beginning, how do you increase those close rates and decrease the sales cycle so much, I want to share the quote from the VP of sales there. And this is just one of the anecdotal things that happened during their first 90 days. And they actually had several things like this happen uh, that they sent over to us. But she says, we got the lead three days ago and closed it today, no actual demo. And they've, they've even sent examples where they, there weren't even any sales interactions, which is kind of remarkable. It doesn't happen very often, but in some cases, DemoChimp does end up automating the sale entirely. Um, and that was for a $35,000 deal. Imagine what you could do if your sales reps were spending more of their time closing deals rather than demoing all the time. So they're still having all those personal interactions, but those the, the prospects come educated and ready to talk specifics. So at this Fortune 500 company, they did split tests over the first 90 days of implementation where they ran some of their deals without DemoChamp, they ran the other deals with DemoChamp. And what they discovered is that they were, with DemoChimp, they, their close rate improved by 27%. And their sales cycle went from 50 days down to 16 days. This is an enterprise level customer. They're sending demos all around the world through DemoChimp. I wanna say they've sent over 10,000 demos around now and, um, and they, they implemented in September. The ultimate result for them is they spent $80,000 to implement DemoChimp in one of their divisions with about, uh, I think it was about 80 sales reps. And they're estimating a $2 million ROI. They're already partway into that, realizing that. In the first several months, they increased their sales by more than $350,000 over their anticipated sales target that they attribute to DemoChimp. So that's a pretty big, uh, powerful, um, number. Now, your organization may not be a big organization, maybe a small organization, but our smaller customers are also seeing dramatic results. And in some ways, it benefits them in even more because they're so uh, leveraged. We have a couple of startups that use our, our solution, and one of them said, you know, I'd have to hire two people to do what DemoChimp does for me. And so this is a tool that can be leveraged in any size organization that is trying to accelerate their sales and achieve maximum growth rate. So to continue to explain uh, what happened at this company as they implemented in the first 90 days, they sell into doctor's offices and hospitals and things like that. And in, in those kinds of environments, there are a lot of people that have to get in on the decision. So in a doctor's office, you've got multiple doctors usually have nurses, you have office staff, office manager, and they each basically have to sign off on it. And doctors are notoriously, uh, you know, type A personalities, don't want to sit down and watch a demo. And what they've discovered is that by using the automated demo that tailors the message to their unique interests, whenever the time is right for that person on the purchasing committee, they were able to get some dramatic traction inside organizations that they normally couldn't get traction in. So they were able to rejuvenate their dead pipeline. They sent the demos out to prospects that had originally uh, seemed like they went dark and they were able to rejuvenate that pipeline. Now the other thing I'm gonna show you is um, another look at the demolytics, but in aggregate, aggregate view so I'm going to jump over to our own account, pull up our own demo, we'll see some real-time stats here. So if we look at our own demo over the last 30 days, and you can change the date range and all of that. If you look at our own demo over the last 30 days, you can see the colors here, very important, somewhat important, not important. You can see an aggregate across all of our views, and if we look at how many views there are, there have been about 1,500 views of our own demo. So over 1,500 views, the, most, the one that is marked very important the most is engaging leads and opportunities. 
with intelligent personalization. And then shortly after, not too far behind, is shortening the sales cycle and increasing revenue. And so you can see what is really getting the, the most interest, the, what, what drives our prospects' interest the most. Conversely, you can see what's marked not important the most. Well, we can look at this longest green bar is enabling your resellers. So about, 36, about a third of our prospects going through our demo don't really care about resellers uh, and enabling them. And that's most likely because they don't do sales through resellers. You know, that's my guess. But it's, it gives you these insights into your own product and your own market that are difficult to get otherwise. And it kind of gives you a list of what is, I mean, just a quick look uh, up here, what's the most popular, what's the least popular, and so on. When you're using it on your website, you can also see how it converts. So we can see um, out of 1,500 total views, uh, about 1,300 of those happened on our website. The others were demos that we sent out to people. And then out of those website views, that, that same number here, we had 118 people sign up as leads uh, through the demo. So we got about a 9% conversion rate. So I want to talk just a little bit about how DemoChimp works for marketing as well and lead conversion and lead qualification. So as I mentioned, inside the demo, when you put it on your website, you can have call to action buttons. And when you send it to somebody who you already know, you already have them as a prospect, you, the call to action is to share it. But let me just show you our own demo here. And so you'll notice right after this intro video, We've got the contact button over here, which they can click any time, or in our demo, the way it's set up is after the intro video, it automatically pops up a, a blocker, basically. We call it a gate. So it says to continue, you've, you know, we've got to fill this out, right? So this is not an uncommon practice on websites, but what's different about DemoChimp is that you can position this pretty much wherever you want in the demo. So you can optimize where the conversion rate happens best. A lot of websites will put this kind of at the very beginning. You can't see our white paper unless you sign up. You can't see this video unless you sign up, and so on. What we're saying here is we're putting it right after the intro video, and we're saying we're going to tell you a lot more, but right after the intro video, now you have to sign up if you want to get all the more. Now, you can also put it at the end. You, you don't have to ever have this pop up if you don't want to, but I'll tell you what's remarkable is how the conversion rate changes depending on where you put it. So let me show you in the editor of the demo where you, where you indicate this. So when you build out demos, uh, and, or when we build them for you, and that's how we typically do it with our customers, but we get to choose where we require the sign up. And so you can choose before the demo, after the intro video, after those personalization questions at the, at the end, or we just don't show the form automatically. So what's really interesting is if we go and look at the analytics for this particular demo, and we go into uh, let's say we go back to November 1st. So we'll put this in November. Actually, let me, let me put it through about November 15th. Okay, look at our conversion rate here, 0.86% for the first two weeks of November. At about the third week of November, we were doing experimentation. The third or fourth week of November, we moved it. We moved that sign-up form to after the intro video. We had been experimenting with all the different locations. We had a new demo that we pulled in, uh, we released in October. And if you look at, I don't remember the date we did that, but let's just look at December just for to make it a clean break here. So we'll go to all of December. And you can look, we've got an 11% conversion rate. It was remarkable. If we put it at the very beginning where you couldn't uh, even watch the demo unless you um, unless you signed up, and we found that we got a lot of leads, but it, they weren't very effective leads, right? People put in a lot of junk, or, hey, I hate, make, I hate you, I don't like you making me sign up before I get to see anything. 
Um, we still would get some good leads, but um, once we moved it to after the intro video, it actually generated a lot of really clean leads. It continues to generate. This has been our best spot. Continues to generate a lot of really clean leads and um, and at a high conversion rate. So 11 percent, uh, you know, five to six times more than typical website conversion rates usually. They're usually down around you know one and a half to three percent, something like that. So uh, I just thought I'd share that that bit of information that we learned over the last little while. So it's been really fun to experiment with that and uh, optimize that for our own website and also for our customers. Our customers see the same kinds of results as they move that lead capture form around. The beautiful thing about capturing leads this way is you not only get their contact info as you normally would, but you also get all of their their uh, demo lytics. So if you click in into the leads area, which I'll pull up here. You can see the leads that have come in and all of the different uh, engagement that they may have had with the demo, and you can drill down on it, right down into their, their heat map, and see exactly, again, what's very important to them, uh, what's somewhat important, and in this case, this person didn't. So imagine when you follow up with that lead, you can, you can really position your conversation. So you can use DemoChimp for both lead gen and lead qualification, but the biggest bang for your buck is using it in sales because you're out there basically duplicating your best demo or a consistent message to the right person every time you're discovering and engaging that buying panel, and you're able to shorten the sales cycle. And we've seen enough data from our customers that we're very confident that with any B2B sales organization, we can dramatically impact their close rates and their sales cycle. And um, just to also talk about how do you get the content in there, right? There's video documents. We are a full demo automation partner. We have a professional content development team and implementation team that works with you to rapidly create the content. So your involvement ends up being about one to two hours a week and uh, we're able to build some very professional content for you um, in about a three to five week time frame and get you implemented. And, um, and the beautiful thing about that too is we will maintain the content so as your app changes or your content needs changes over time we'll make adjustments to it so your demo is always relevant and up to date. So that is uh, kind of concludes the formal part of the webinar today. I'm going to now answer what questions you might have put into the question area. So if you haven't yet and you have questions, let me, you can go ahead and plug those in. So George asks, what happens to the demos after the client says yes or no? Do they have time, do they have a time to live counter? Can we cancel them? Um, I'm not sure what that question means exactly, but uh, once the client interacts with the demo, you get you get the information uh, back through the demo analytics, so you can follow up with them. So, George, if you want to kind of add to that, maybe if I misunderstood your question, please add to that, and I'll answer. So, next question is about pricing, and so you can find the pricing on our website. We may be chasing, changing the pricing model somewhat in February, but right now the pricing is about $1,800 per user per year. And users are usually salespeople. You might have a few marketing users and so on like that. But um, so if you get 10 or more users, then we'll actually build out all of your content, and maintain it for the first year, and. Um, and then we can, you know, we can provide you with other additional pricing details that may be relevant, you know, specific to your organization, if you want to start a conversation with us. So hopefully that's helpful. So let's see, George, I think you were uh, clarifying your previous question, so thanks for that. Uh, you're saying, what happens six months later? Does the client have the demo to forward, <clears throat> excuse me, forward whenever he wants? So if you're concerned about um, it expiring or being available out there, some of our clients have felt concerned about, oh, our demo's out there, maybe 
our competition is going to see it. Uh, some clients don't care about that, and you know, it just depends on the organization. But we have some security settings, <clears throat> and uh, since you asked, I'll kind of show those here that actually cause the demo to expire. So let me show you what we have in the settings area here. So you have a demo expiration option where you can flip that on and tell it to expire after so many views. So if you want it to only be viewed one time or three times, <clears throat> this is the number of views per person um, that uh, they share it with inside their organization. But you can turn that off. You can also turn off sharing. If you don't want to give them the option to share it, you can do that too. That does sort of preclude the big benefit of discovering all the people in the buying panel. But those are some options right there. We're also adding other security kind of confidentiality options um, in the future, but that's kind of how that works. I hope, hope that answers your question. Okay. So Karen asks, who creates the content? So our content development team is a professional video production team that works with you to build the content. We have a very specific process. And I'll pull up a little uh, document that may help with that. If you can see this document here, <clears throat> this, these are our steps to demo creation. So we have a project planning meeting with you. Let me just zoom in a little bit to make sure it's easy to see. Project planning meeting where we go over messaging and all kinds of things to help you prep, plan for the demo effectively. We build out a script based on a recording of your own demo. So you have a your best demoer demo to us essentially and we have that recorded and we use that as kind of the basis of writing the script out. Of course you get to review these elements at each stage. Then we build out the video elements and then we get into implementation. But of course at each stage you're going through a revision process. It usually takes a review and revision process. It usually takes about one to two hours per week during the five weeks to on your side to manage this process effectively. We have a great project manager internally, but from your side you want to of course review the scripts, review the videos. Um, we actually create documents for you as well. Um, you can create them for your demo. That go right along with what we create with the content. If you don't, if you have specific white papers or other things like that that you want to include, you can. So great question. Thank you uh, to those of you who have asked questions so far. And I also wanted to show you that we have a white paper on the the specific use case or, or case study that we showed earlier. And I believe we've sent that out to everybody, but if for some reason you haven't seen that yet, um, feel free to reach out and we can send you this out in case you want to uh, dive a little deeper into that case study. So uh, while I'm waiting to see if anyone else wants to put in uh, some other questions, I'll just share a little bit about myself in case you want to reach out. So I found a demo chimp a couple of years ago because I was struggling in my previous startup to um, figure out how to handle all the requests for demos. So we had a sales team that just couldn't keep up with all the requests for demos and I thought there's got to be some way to automate this. So once I, I was out trying to start a new project, uh, this was one of the pain points I thought about and went and talked to about 30 different B2B companies and uh, found that it was a pretty universal problem. So anyway, you can reach me at garen at demochimp.com or my Twitter handler there. And if you want to follow Demochimp, uh, you can check us out on Facebook or Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, or on our website. So George asks, if, we, if we're on a tight budget, we can, can we skip your content creation use existing videos? So it's definitely something we can talk through. Uh, we have some customers who have done that successfully, some who uh, found that their videos weren't you know, perfectly suited for this kind of an environment, but uh, certainly we could look at that and make some recommendations. So happy to talk to you about that or have someone talk to you about it if you have more questions. So if there are no, if there are no other questions, then I'm going to wrap up here and we'll just leave the final slide on a quote from another one of our customers. So 
Hopefully you've enjoyed learning about DemoChimp. It's a new technology that's really revolutionizing the way sales, B2B sales are done. And I hope that you take an opportunity to explore it a little further for your organization. If you reach out to me, I will have somebody get in touch with you that can help you evaluate it effectively and see if it's a good fit. So thanks again, everybody, for joining. And you guys have a great rest of your day.